All right, before we can actually write any tests, we need to add our test runner and our support libraries. So let's go ahead and add those. I'm using yarn, feel free to use npm. Uh, so what I'm gonna say is yarn add dash dash dev. We want to add these as development dependencies. I'm going to add jest, which is a jest test runner. I'm going to add jest dash expo, and that's a configuration or a preset for jest, specifically for expo apps. If you're using the React Native CLI, you'll be using the React Native preset, uh, which should already be installed in your project. Next, we're going to add jest fetch mock, which will allow us to mock the fetch library later on. I'm also going to add React Native testing library, which is our actual library we're going to be using to be rendering our React Native apps and then trying to target different parts of it and interact with those components in our tests. And finally, we need to add React Test Renderer. And React Test Renderer is basically a support library for a React Native testing library, or a library that's built on top of uh, that kind of takes this React Test Renderer, which you'll see a lot in typical React apps. Um, it's powerful, but somewhat limited. And React Native testing library then kind of builds on top of that to make it really powerful for us as React Native developers. So I'll go ahead and install all of those. With that done, we can go ahead and go over to our package.json and you can see all of our libraries are added in here. Now below private, what I want to do is add a new configuration for jest, which is going to take an object. In here we want to set a preset. This preset is going to be jest expo, or if you're using React Native, it would be React Native, the React Native CLI rather. Uh, we also want to add a transform ignore patterns. And there's a lot to this. Transform ignore patterns means we're not going to try to process code in certain directories. Or rather, yeah, that's right. We're not going to transform these in any way. So what we want to do, and I'm, I would suggest you just copy this from down below. Uh, basically, we want to add a variety of packages that we don't want to transform. Because if you do, uh, you'll see kind of a bunch of well, really nothing will build in your test. So it's important to go ahead and add this. And I've just gone ahead and pasted it. Again, copy this from down below the video. But you can see we don't want to transform anything in node modules that matches Jest or React Native or React Native clone referenced element or React Native community, Expo, Exponent, uh, React Navigation, so on and so forth. There's These are all the common things that you're really likely to see uh, in a React Native app but you may need to go ahead and actually expand on that if you've got specific additions that you've got that may or may not need to be transformed. So if you're ever running into issues, transform ignore patterns could be a good place for you to look. Now, in addition to that, we want to go ahead and add another key, which is auto mock, auto mock and we're gonna go ahead and set this to false. We'll use that later on when we're mocking our fetch library, uh, but that should be all there. One more thing we're going to do in our package.json is add a new script. This script is going to be test, and in this we'll just go ahead and run jest, which allows us to then just go ahead and say yarn test. It'll go ahead and run that jest script. Uh, the reason we do that rather than just calling jest directly is because if someone has a global installation of jest, they might run into issues because uh, they may be using a different version of jest versus what you're using versus what the project's expecting. So it's just nice to always have these local versions of uh, test runner for in this case uh, so that everyone's on the same page when running these tests. So now with all of that installed if we actually go to their terminal and say yarn test we're going to see just start and then our tests are going to fail because we don't actually have any tests set up so what we can do to quickly just test to make sure everything's configured correctly is go ahead and create a new file we're just going to go ahead and add this in index.test.js, or next to it, I'm going to call it index.test.js. And in here, I'm going to say test, it works. And then we're going to say expect true. Oops, we can go ahead and delete that. This should just be expect, expect true dot to be truthy. And we'll talk about these different uh, modifiers a little bit later on. But if we run that, we can see now when we run our test, we've got a little warning here. Uh, we can just go ahead and safely ignore that. But down here we've got 
the important part that we had one test suite run, we had one test in there run and it did succeed. So we know that our tests are now set up correctly.